Okay, anybody else have anything? Kerry? Yes, I, I wanted to make a comment about a particular patient that I saw that reminds me of what you all have at this particular point in your armamentarian, if you will. I get a patient calls me up on the phone and says, look, my, my brother-in-law from Colorado who saw you a few months ago says I should come down and see you before I go in for electroshock therapy. <laughs> I, oh, I love those. <laughs> I say, oh, great, you know, who's your brother-in-law? So she's driving down from Georgia instead of going into electroshock therapy and when I, when I find out what her issues are, she's been in depression for 10 years. She's been in such severe depression for the past three years that she cries much of the day. In fact, for the past number of months, she's been crying six to eight hours a day, every day. Electroshock therapy is sounding better and better, isn't it? <laughs> she also has what's been diagnosed as fibromyalgia. Well, she comes down, she says she has pins and needles that are severe in her arms and legs. Only from the knees down and only in the upper arms and forearms. That's her presentation in the office. We have about an hour consultation and I begin to treat her. How do I approach her? I start at step number one, two, three, four, and I begin to relieve sources of irritation into the nervous system. Because what we know is that if we relieve sources of irritation that imbalance cerebellar cortical asymmetries and restore that and restore normal input into the, to the mesencephalon, which she is right steps 1 through 12 that we're going to potentially have a favorable response. By the end of that first visit, which because of her pain I wanted to be as short as possible so it was only two and a half hours. <laughs> and yeah only two and a half hours. Um, the, she had 90 percent reduction in pain in her extremities which was uh, favorable. Her depression had lifted to such an extent that she didn't feel like she had to cry. I said, that's great. Let's see you tomorrow. She comes into the office the next day. She hasn't cried for the first time in months at all since I saw her the first visit. I only did steps 1 through 12, 1 through 11. That's all I did. I stopped at that particular point because the result was so favorable. I checked a couple of other things, but they didn't show up. Exact process is the restoring neurologic function. So she comes in, she says she hasn't cried. I say to her, well, how's the pins and needles? She says it's still 90% reduced. At the end of that second visit, which took about an hour and a half, she, which was the next day before she drove back to Georgia, um, she says, you know, all of my pain is gone. I don't feel like I have to cry. In fact, I feel like I maybe can help drive home. Now this is a woman who's been lying in bed just before she goes into electroshock therapy, having come out of a hospital two months earlier because she was hooked on narcotics and had to go to a, through a detox program to get off the narcotics for the pain that she had in her arms and legs, right? She, she gets relieved of that and while she's exiting from the rehab program, she goes into AFib for the first time in her life and has to have resolution associated with that and stays in the hospital for another few days. And she comes into an office of somebody, you know, this, when I look at that response, because at the end of this visit she was completely resolved, I said, you know, there are some nutrients that we have to provide for you. They were B vitamins. They were activated forms of vitamin B6, activated form of folic acid, and I think some panathenic acid. These all showed up in the normal process of assessing her through the protocol. And I said, you know, there are going to be some other things that need to be done to support you. I am certain of it. You know, because you've had this for such a long period of time. However, she calls me day before I come here and she says, you know, there's no way I can thank you because you've given me back my life. Now, what gave her back my life? Was it me? I was the instrument. But what really gave her back her life was this process. This process of understanding how to think through physiology. 
relieve irritation to nervous system function. It's a process that you are owning and you will continue to expand your ability to own it. But it's the process itself. Any one of you, if this patient would have presented in your office, could have been able to do exactly what I did in this process. It wasn't because of me. It's because of the work that we all are privileged to be a part of at this particular point. And she calls and she says, there's no amount of money that could pay for what you've done to my life. And she says, and by the way, my psychiatrist is so impressed she's got a really difficult patient she wants to bring down to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I was really pleased about that. <laughs> so, we're going to refer those patients across the country. <laughs> you guys are going to be beneficiaries. So I, I just want to give you a perspective about the possibilities that are inherent within a process that, that allows you to think through physiology like the masterful musician who's learned the sheet music and is able to take that sheet music and improvise <coughs> through it and move through it fluidly. All of you have that seed and that potential within you and you're probably practicing it as clearly as you can at this particular point and I will tell you from my own experience having been at this process intensely that I'm continuing to expand my ability to apply this knowledge and, and this awareness and so as you get the psychiatric cases in your office in the future you will know they're referred by my office to you <laughs> just to allow you <laughs> Uh, I did, but much of what uh, I did on day two didn't require many of the other steps. I found a toxic metal poisoning on day two, for instance, that may predispose her. But it was interesting, when I got to the immune system, it was emotional recall quick fix that came up as a second that the immune system was secondary to. Now, doesn't that make sense? Ten years of problem, I didn't tell you that she had five years of a very difficult relationship with an adopted daughter that about tore her apart. And it was right after that that she went into the depression. So this is the kind of thing that's going to walk into your office every day, get excited about it, and, uh, and enjoy the process, enjoy the, the, the ability to change people's lives. It's really a magnificent thing. Thanks, Alan Carey. Thank you.